basic route filters with Microtik Router OS version 7.5 stable. We continue with our topology wherein we have two routers running OSPF dynamic routing protocol. This time, let us see how we can suppress routes by the use of route filters. When OSPF default and connected redistribution configured, the MT2 router should have additional routes Learn from the OSPF, specifically 192.168.100.0 network, 192.168.255.1, which is the loopback, 192.168.122.0 network, which is the going to the ISP, and the default route of 0, .0, .0, .0, .0. So this is our two Microtik routers, MT1 on the left side and MT2 on the right side. So as you can see on the interface IP addresses, so we have the LAN side of MT1, 192.168.100 network. This is going to the ISP router on Ether1 interface, 192.168.122 network. It has a loopback IP of 192.168.255.1. As a quick recap, we have configured in our OSPF instance to redistribute the default route as well as to redistribute connected routes. So with that configured, our MT2 router learned via OSPF, for example, the LAN network of MT1, which is 192.168.100 network, the going to the ISP router of MT1, which is 192.168.122 network, the loopback interface which is 192.168.255.1 and finally because we redistribute the default route from MT1 so our MT2 learn on this network so via OSPF the default route of 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 slash 0 now let's do a demo on how we could make use of route filters in order to change some settings on the routes learn, for example, via our OSPF. For example, in order to just get the feel on what is or the purpose of route filters, suppose I learn this route, which is 192.168.122.0 slash 24 via OSPF with the default administrative distance of 110. Suppose that I want, when I learn this route, it will be incremented or there's an increment of distance and it should become 111 instead of 110. So let's see how we could make use of route filters to achieve that particular objective. So in order to open this route filters, so you go to routing filters and you will have this window. So you'll have several tabs. So we will just focus our attention to rule. And we will add a new filter rule. So if we click the plus sign, we'll have the routing filter rule window open. So we have chain. So if we drop down, we don't have. And we have the rule wherein we need to key in our script-like syntax filter rules. So I will create my very first chain. So I will call it in filter. Next for my rule, so I have a ready rule wherein we will copy this one and put it on our winbox. So a filter rule may consist of multiple matchers and action. So this section is what we call the matcher wherein we are matching anything with a destination address of 192.168.122.0 slash 24. Next section is the action. In case this match or this condition is match, so meaning to say if the destination is this network, please set the distance to be plus one. So meaning to say in this instance we have 110 plus one, it becomes 111. Please accept that particular route. So next is else, or meaning to say all other networks not listed in this matcher. So please accept. So let's click apply and click OK. 
So now we have our very first routing filter rule. So a routing filter rule will not take effect. So as you can see, it doesn't take effect even though we have added this routing filter rule. So there's nothing wrong with this rule. It's such that this rule hasn't been applied to our dynamic routing protocol, for example, the OSPF. So if we go to routing OSPF and you go to instance, there is a place wherein you could apply the filter, whether it's on outbound direction or inbound. So in this video tutorial, because of time constraints, we will just focus on in filter. So we will implement it on MT2. So as the routing advertisement of this particular route enters, or this route being redistributed on MT2 as it enters, so it's an in direction for us or inbound. So we will filter this route in such a way that we will increase the distance, but we will still accept this route. So without further delay, we configure the in filter. So we go to the instance. So under in filter, we'll go drop down and select our only chain. So in filter, click apply and click OK. So as we apply, you'll notice that our distance for this particular route, remember this is dynamic route, we don't have any chance to edit any of the values here. But as you notice, versus other OSPF routes, this distance number is different. Now that we know what a route filter can do, let's have a concrete objective. So for our objective, suppose we want our MT2 that it could not reach the ISP network interface of MT1. So this is the ISP interface IP of MT1, which is the Ether1, 192.168.122. And the solution should be routing only or route filters only. So as you could see, if I click start, I have a reply because I have a route going to that particular destination. So let's try some options. So let's say we will make the distance as 255, edit the route filter, and edit the portion wherein we do plus 1, and instead directly type in 255. Okay, so click apply, click OK. So you'll notice from 111, it changes to 255. So let's see if we will be able to ping this destination with a distance of 255. And for the time being, yes. Next, what if we completely reject this route and don't need to even set some distance? So again, we edit the routing filter rule. We completely erase this portion and change it with the reject. So click apply, click OK, and see what happens. It has now the filtered flag. So now with reject filter rule, let us see if we could ping this destination IP. And yes, we are still able to ping this particular IP address. Then finally, for this demonstration, we will make use of our third option, which is to black hole this route. So let's go ahead and configure. So this time, instead of uh, just reject, so we'll set black hole. Yes. And we will accept the route. So set black hole, space yes. Then we accept the route. So click apply, click OK. So you'll notice the filtered is gone. But if you double click on this route, you'll see the black hole is checked. So now let's try to see if our MT2 router will be able to reach this particular IP address. So click start. So now there is a timeout. So we have tried various options on our route filters. So on our third option, which is to set the route as black hole and accept the route. So there is this result that we are unable to reach the IP address of this particular interface on our MT1.